Bibles to Psalm 101 for our public reading of scriptures, Psalm 101. It's a psalm of David after he ascended the throne and in there we find the king's determination to rule righteously. Psalm 101. I will sing of mercy and justice to you, O Lord. I will sing praises. I will behave wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. Perverse heart shall depart from me. I will not know wickedness. Whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him I will destroy. One who has a haughty look and a proud heart, him I will not endure. My eyes shall be on the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He who walks in the perfect way, he shall serve me. He who walks deceit shall not dwell within my house. He who tells lies shall not continue in my presence. Early I will destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all the evildoers in the city of the Lord. Amen. Let's take our hymn books again and turn to 452. 452, we sing love with everlasting love. 452.
go over a few notices. Our brother Gary is at Needham Evangelical this morning. So let's uh, keep him in our thoughts and prayers. And this evening, for our evening service at half past six, we have Gaius Fillingham. Gaius Fillingham, and he is with Daylight uh, Prison Ministry. And he'll be sharing uh, this evening. So let's um, come before the Lord once again in prayers. <clears throat> Almighty Jehovah, our dear Heavenly Father, it is good that we draw near to you, that we gaze upon your beauty and worship you in the beauty of holiness. It is good for us to be here in your house for such a glorious day as this. The day that you have made, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. A day that you have ordained that we should come before you and worship you and fellowship as your people and delight your presence and seek to hear your word and uh, speak your praises and the wonders of your works from our lips and to meditate and reflect on your attributes and your character and all that you are. Oh, Father, let this time be fruitful, Lord. Pray that you help us in your worship here this morning. Pray that everyone will be focused on you, for you are the object of our worship. Still our hearts before you. We've come here with many cares and issues in our hearts. You know uh, all our cares, and your word says that we should cast, we should hurl all these cares upon you, for you care for us. He said we should take no thought about what we will eat, what we will wear, how we will be. Uh, sheltered, you say, our Heavenly Father, He knows that we have need of these things. You care for every aspect of our lives. You are able to meet even our practical needs as much as you meet our spiritual needs. You are our sufficiency. Our hope is in you. Our help is in you. We look up to you because our help can only come from above. As we draw near to you, Heavenly Father, we uh, recognize that we are fallen, frail creatures of dust. We are weak, only thou art strong. You are a holy God, and your eyes will not behold iniquity. Your eyes cannot behold iniquity. And we thank you for the precious blood of your Son that covers us. We thank you that we have such a high priest before you who can sympathize with all our sins and all our weaknesses and our failures and our blindness and our darkness. And he was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. And since we have such a high priest uh, before the throne of God, we can draw near and boldly uh, to obtain mercy and to receive grace to help us in this time of need. Father, have mercy upon us, Lord. Forgive us of our sins, which are so many, how we go astray in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions, our attitude, our behaviors. Please forgive us, Lord. You know. It is not in us to do right. We only do right by your grace and through the help of your Holy Spirit. So let us receive fresh mercy, fresh grace. Let us know the joy of uh, sins forgiven, Lord. And we thank you for such a God as you are who pardons the iniquities of sinners and who invites sinners to draw near and to have fellowship with him. And again, we know that this is only possible through your son. It is on his uh, merits, Lord. It's on the basis of his sacrifice that we draw near. We rejoice in all that the son of God is and all that he has done for us. Oh, we thank you for that glorious sacrifice on the cross on our behalf and how you loved us so much that you would lay down your life as a sacrifice. You say greater love has no man than to lay down his life for his friends. You call us friends. Lord, and we rejoice in you, Lord Jesus. We pray that we would know uh, your help and your touch and your smile upon us. We pray that your spirit will move freely and fully amongst us. The spirit who has been sent uh, to comfort us, to help us, to uh, stand by us. And we pray that he would apply all of your graces and your blessings to our hearts. We thank you for that promise that... Uh, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And we know that the Holy Spirit, He makes His blessings, His spiritual blessings real in our lives. He is the applier of God's uh, salvation to our hearts. And we pray that all the 
things that uh, Christ is and all that he has and all that he gives, that Holy Spirit, you will fully uh, make these things available, that we will partake of the realities of these things in our hearts as we are here to worship. I pray that everyone will receive from you, from the elders to the youngest here. So help us in our worship of you, Lord. We remember our brother Gary, who is away preaching in Needham Evangelical. We pray that your presence will draw near, that you help him and you uh, strengthen him and you bless him and Jill and you bless your people there. And that your worship will be glorious, that your word will be freely and fully proclaimed and you would move in the hearts of people, Lord. Uh, uh, just uh, meeting them at the point of their needs, those who need to be saved, that you will save them. Those who need to be um, restored, you will restore them. Those who need to be, be healed, you will heal them. And that you will bless your people, you will do good to their souls. We pray for Gaius of Fillingham this evening, Lord. Thank you for his life and that of his wife and their ministry, Lord, with daylight. A prison trust we pray that you would um, help him and bring him here safely to us this evening that you bless his ministry to us we thank you for the work in the prisons all over this country lord we pray that you would um, just work in that ministry lord thank you uh, for the hope that these prisoners have through christ that even though they've fallen and they were lost lord that they can be restored and have peace with god through the lord jesus christ so we pray that you bless the ministry in uh, the prisons all over this land. And Lord, we come to you on behalf of this nation. Lord, we ask for mercy upon this land. We pray that you restore your truth and your righteousness and your fear and your wisdom to this land. We pray that you help our leaders to govern in the way of righteousness. We pray that we see your hand working in all the areas of this nation, from the political arena to the educational system, the healthcare system, Lord, the economy, Lord, the media, and all that is going on. We just Commit these areas into your able hands, Lord. We pray that you uh, raise up more uh, 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 of your children, Lord, to stand in these areas, to be light shining in the darkness and offering hope and just revealing your love to this uh, dark and fallen and lost world. We pray for your mercy in war-torn areas. In many of these places, Christians are suffering uh, persecution and hostilities, Lord. We pray for your mercy, that you strengthen your people all over these places, that the light of the gospel will shine in the midst of the darkness of war and bloodshed and all the wickedness that is going on due to the hearts of men. We pray that the light of the gospel will shine and sin uh, will be broken and the power of the enemy, Lord, uh, will be pushed back, Lord. We pray that you win many people for yourself in this day and time. Set the captives free, Lord. Bring your peace, your peace that passes all understanding, your peace in the midst of the storm. So let us know your blessing, Lord. We pray that you bless your people all over uh, the world, wherever they meet to gather. Some they meet on the ground, some they meet in forests, in, 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 in concentration camps, and wherever they are, draw near to your people. And bless the, the fellowship and the union uh, this day. Make this a glorious Lord's day for us, Lord. That your name will be exalted. That Jesus will be honored. That the Holy Spirit will be adored. And that God will have his way amongst his people. So we thank you for this uh, time of prayer. And we just look to you to lead us on as we continue in your worship. We offer all these uh, through that great and mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I'd like to invite Adrian to please come up and take the young people's talk, please. Thank you, Adrian. Well, good morning, children. Good to see you. I hope you've had a good week. And it's a great blessing that you should be here amongst us this morning. Well, I just want to share um, a little story, but first, uh, when I was growing up, a boy, little boy growing up, I used to watch a TV program called The Six Million Dollar Man. Have you ever heard of that one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, have anybody heard of that one? Yeah, yeah, I was allowed to watch that, I don't know why. The Six Million Dollar Man, and I used to think he must be mighty special to be worth so much, and I don't suppose I could even count that far. And, and, and even in the sports world and, and places like that today, it's amazing how much people are worth, aren't they? You know, you get um, certain teams will pay 40, 50, 60, 70 million, even 100 million for an individual player. You know, I suppose these 
trying to buy success. You know, we won't mention no teams, but they wear sky blue. But never mind, <laughs> never mind, never mind. But that got, that got me thinking, that got me thinking, wondering how much am I worth? How much am I worth? Probably not six million pounds, but surely I have to be worth something. Surely I must be worth something. And I just wonder, how much do you think you're worth, young people? Ten pound, twenty pound, fifty pound, hundred pound? Maybe even a million pound. Maybe even a million pound. But what would you say? What would you say, young people, if I told you you were worth more than all the money, all the money in the world, all right? And yes, that's true. Yes, that's very true. And God has made that perfectly clear to us, hasn't he? But I just want to tell you a story of exactly what I mean, all right? A little story, I don't know whether you've heard this before, uh, but this is about a little boy called Charlie. And Charlie, um, who carefully made one day a little sailboat, all right? And he carved out the body of wood, all right? And he painted it blue, and then he fitted it with a mask and sails. And when he finished it, he carried his new boat to the edge of his local river to sail it. And it, that's only my interpretation, but it, something that looked like that. Something like that. He painted it blue, good colour in it, blue, blue and white, yeah, and some sails. And he took it down to his little river, all right, and he went to sail it, all right. And uh, what he did, he had a string on it as well. He had a string on it attached to it, so he could let in the river and let the little current take it down and backwards and forwards as far as the string would go. And he was delighted with his boat, all right. He loved it, and he would have hour and hour and hours and hours of fun doing it, all right. And he was laughing and he was admiring his little boat, all right. But then suddenly, Suddenly, boys and girls, there was a strong current come along. A strong current come along on the river, which sometimes do happen when they open gates or whatever, and the current suddenly changed, all right? And his boat was right down the bottom of his run, and he suddenly quickly pulled back the string, and guess what happened? It's a string boat. Poor old Charlie, he lost his boat. He tried running after it, he couldn't find it, and the river, the current took it further and further away, and he searched for it, and he searched out and out, but it got so dark, that he had to go home. It was too dark and he had to go home. So off he went. He trudged silently and tearfully back home, knowing he'd lost his boat. Poor old Charlie. But then one day, one day a few days later, Charlie was walking home from school through the town, back home, when he looked in the local charity shop and there in the window, amazingly, was his boat. There was his boat in the window. He couldn't believe it. There was his little boat. It was scratched and the sails were torn and the paint was all, all over the place a little bit. But that was definitely his boat. Someone must have found it and handed it in. And so he rushed into the shop. Charlie rushed into the shop and he said to the man on the counter, that's my boat. That's my boat in the window. I'm the one who made it. But the man said, I'm sorry, someone bought it in this morning. And if you want it, it will cost you two pound. Two pound. So Charlie looked at the boat again, he ran out of the shop, he ran back home as quick as he could, and he went and found his money box. Do we all have money boxes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And amazingly, when he entered his money box, guess how much he had? He had exactly two pound in it. So he picked it up, and he rushed back to the shop, gave it to the man in the counter, and he let him have his boat. Amazingly. And so he was smiling ear to ear. He was so overjoyed that he had his boat back again. All right? And looking at it and smiling at it, Charlie said something really incredible. He said, you know what, you are twice mine. Firstly, I made you, and now I have bought you. Isn't that amazing? And so, young people, as much as that boat was special to Charlie because he created it, amazingly, you are special to God because he created you. Isn't that an amazing thing to know? All right? Now, when that boat, was, when that boat drifted away to become someone else's possession, Charlie was still willing to pay the price to get it back. And even though he was the one who created it, it didn't matter. That boat was torn up and it was all, all over the place. That didn't matter. That boat was his. And in some way, young people, that is what um, God has done for us. And when we read a verse like 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20, it tells us that God bought you at a high price. And what was that price? It was his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, all right? So how much are you worth this morning, young people? Well, just look at the price tag. 
What does the price tag tell us? What, what are you worth? Yeah. Jesus Christ had paid it all, didn't he? Mm. On the cross. He gave his precious, precious gift that you and I must have life. You know, God loves you so much, that was the highest price that he could pay for you. All right? Giving his only son. And so if you repent of your sins, believe on him, have faith on him, do you know what? You can have no longer a lost life, but you can have an eternal life. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Eternal life. Amazing thing. So we can go from being lost to being found. All right? So what are all my sins? What are our sins? All right? I've got lots of sins. But 1 John 1 verse 7 tells us, it says this. It says, And the blood of Jesus Christ, he said, cleanses us from all sin. All sin. Not just little ones or little two sins, it, but all sin. That's an amazing promise, isn't it? Jesus can cleanse us and make us anew from all the bad the things that we have done. All right? So seek him with all your heart, like Charlie did for his boat. All right? With all your heart. All right? While he may be found. And then one day, maybe even this morning, God will be able to say of you, I made you. I lost you through sin. I bought you with what Jesus did upon the cross. And now you are mine. Don't worry what the world says about you, boys and girls, this morning. You are worth everything to Jesus Christ and the Heavenly Father. You were once were lost, but now you can be found. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Adrian. <clears throat> Let us turn our attention now to God's Word as we read uh, uh, the Sermon Scriptures from Psalm 132. We read from Psalm 132 to 134 and they are uh, the, the song of ascent when the people went up on pilgrimage to Jerusalem to worship so I will read it through from Psalm 132 to 134 because um, obviously when the scriptures were written there was no chapter division so I'm just going to read it through <coughs> The Lord bless his word to our hearts. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob. Surely I will not go into the chamber of my house or go up to the comfort of my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. Behold, we heard of it in Africa. We found it in the fields of the woods. Let us go into his tabernacle. Let us worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, to your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your saints shout for joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn in truth to David, he will not turn from it. I will set upon your throne the fruit of your body. If your sons will keep my covenant and my testimony, which I shall teach them, their sons also shall sit upon your throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision, or satisfy her poor with bread, will also clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. There I will make the horn of David grow. I will prepare a lamp for my anointed. His enemies I will clothe with shame, but upon himself his crown shall flourish. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down the beard, the beard of Aaron. Running down the edge of his garments is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Behold, bless the Lord, all you, the servants of the Lord, who by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth bless you from Zion. Amen. 
take our hymn books again and we we'll sing 544 before we invite David uh, to uh, come up to bring God's word to us. 544. <clears throat> 544. Open my eyes that I may see. Lord, help us to behold wondrous things out of his law. 544. Open my eyes that I may see. on my eyes that I may see the of truth thou hast for me place in my hands the wonderful King that shall on clubs and set me free silently now I wait for thee ready my God thy of truth, thou sendest come to the last trilogy of psalms in the 15 psalms of ascent which begin the chapter uh, psalm 120 and conclude in psalm 134 and we've noted in previous occasions that this uh, these 15 psalms are made up of five groups of three and that the central group is number 127 uh, where the Lord builds a house and guards the city and has children. And we know that that can apply to the uh, families of our, our own families here on earth. But in the context of the psalm, uh, the, the house that is being built is not any house, it's the Lord's house. And the city that is, is being built and protected is not any city, uh, not even the real city of Jerusalem, but it is uh, the city of God. Uh, it is the city of Mount Zion. And incidentally, these last three chapters will mention Zion, each, each one in its turn. Uh, the focus is towards Zion. And we've, we've seen then how these uh, psalms are written for us. From we, we begin in a place of 
despair, darkness. And each psalm has that aspect to it, coming up to this fifth psalm, the fifth, fifth, fifth trilogy. And, and there's the cry for deliverance that comes in the middle of the psalm. Uh, and the people look to the Lord to deliver them. Uh, and the Lord does deliver them. Uh, and then there's, uh, at the end of each psalm, there's that song of praise and thanksgiving to God for his mercies. Now in these last three psalms, beginning at Psalm 132, there is no mention of the difficulties that we have in our Christian journey on our way home to glory. Uh, David is mentioned. He's mentioned in the psalm. Uh, in all three psalms, allusion is made to David. Uh, David was a great king. He was the king after God's own heart. And uh, the, the tribulations and trials that are mentioned are the ones that David had in his journey towards the throne. And David came to himself on one occasion one day and he thought to himself, it seems silly that I have a house that is splendid and I wish the Lord could have a house like mine, indeed better than mine. And he then proposes that, we, that we, we, he build a house for the Lord's glory and honour. And the Lord told him, no, you know, I'm not going to allow you to do that. Now it's important to underline in our ex examination of these psalms that the people of whom the psalmists are writing are a singing people. God made his people a singing people. You know, for the formal, the formal the distinguish, distinguishing marks of the church, the re great reformers during the Reformation came up with three aspects that define a local church. The first is a place where the word of God is faithfully preached. And the second is where, the, where the, the ordinances or sacraments are faithfully observed, baptism and the Lord's Supper. And the third mark was that the, ch the church exercised discipline towards people who were wayward, who, who had sinned, who had gone the wrong way. And those three marks have stood the test of time ever since then. And I guess when I look at this church here, uh, those three marks fit in. But John Knox in Scotland, uh, who spent some time in exile in, in Geneva, in Switzerland, uh, he and his, his, his fellow man, Andrew Melville, came back from Scotland. And uh, John Knox, he came up with a fourth mark, in fact, five extra marks. He says, first of all, the church is a place where the word of God is faithfully preached, where the sacraments are faithfully observed, where discipline is faithfully exercised, where praise is noteworthy. And the songs of praise are a mark of the church. And as we've examined these psalms of pilgrimage, people going from their home village or town, whether it be in the mountains of Judea or wherever it might be, they were making their way to Jerusalem because it was in Jerusalem that they celebrated the festivals of the Lord and most particularly the festival of Passover. And we can imagine these crowds going to Passover and they're looking for something better every time. They have a dream. They're looking heavenward. One of my pleasures in life and I don't know if you'll agree with me when I finish to say this, is to listen to a certain type of gospel music. <clears throat> it's called Southern Gospel. And some of its uh, well-known names are Bill Gaither, and there are others too who write these songs. Now, I don't love them for their theology, because they can be very weak in theology. But there's one outstanding mark about very many of them is they have a, an aspect toward heaven. They always speak of heaven. For example, I'll give you a little illustration of, of what, 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 what it means. Uh, here, here, here they are, and they're singing these so songs of praise to God. That glor glad reunion day, there'll be a happy meeting in heaven, I know, when we see the many loved ones we've known here below gathered on the blessed hilltops with hearts all aglow, that will be a glad reunion day. 
There will be in that holy city, you'll sing and rejoice, praising the Christ, the blessed Saviour, with heart and with voice, basking in the love of Jesus, beholding his face. That will be a glad reunion day. When we live a million years in that wonderful place, basking in the love of Jesus, beholding his face, it will seem but just a moment of praising his grace. That will be a glad reunion day. And there are various songs of that nature. Now, I, I, I say that because th this, is, this is the kind of song we're looking at this morning. I'm not going to go into all the detail of it. But the people are making their way to Jerusalem. And if you like to put one word over all these three psalms, it's the word home at last. Mm. Home at last. We're there. We, we've made the journey. It's been a journey uphill, down pale. It's been a journey, journey that's been smooth for times, but more often rough than not. It was a journey that caused us to feel the weight of the darkness we lived in and wishing that we could be elsewhere. Lord, take me away from this, this, this foul place, this stinking world, this polluted environment. I can't take it anymore. And so they pray, but it's not here, because they've arrived. You see, they had a dream. And their dream was to be at Jerusalem. Their dream was to be there where the, the, the Lord God sh showed his glory. And in the early days it was like that. But the glory had departed now. And it had become a mere formality. And yet they still dreamed of that day. When the glory would be re renewed. When the glory would come to them again. And it did but it didn't come in the form of a building. It didn't come in the form of a city. It didn't come in the form of a country. It came in the form of a person. And our Lord Jesus Christ is that one. Amen. And that's the one whose glory they were heading for. They were longing to see him and his glory in, 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 in the temple. Now, as these songs are sung, they come into a context of singing psalms. Now we have the book of psalms and we, we, we should learn from them to sing some of them. Mm. But we have other psalms too. We have the song of Moses back in Exodus 15. Mm. And it's a psalm of delivery. It's a psalm of, of glory and praise. A psalm of renewal. And we have the song of Miriam. And that's another one of deliverance and thanksgiving. And we have the song of Deborah in the book of Judges. And we have the song of Hannah in the temple. And we have the song of songs of David over and over again. And how realistic they are. Lord, I'm a miserable... Psalm 51. Lord, I'm a miserable sinner. I, I sinned against you. Do you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight? Don't take your spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Open my mouth and I shall be praised. Open my lips and I shall tell the, the heathen who, who you are. And now we have David. And he wants to build a place for the Lord. What he doesn't realise is the Lord is building a place for him. And that's true of us all. We want our earthly ta ta tabernacle, if you like. Our little temple, like our, our churches. Where the Lord is present by his spirit. We, we, we dream of that day when everything will be perfect. That glad reunion day. That day when all shall change. And in the twinkling of an eye, uh, our, 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 our resurrection bodies will, will appear because those of our loved ones who have gone to glory. Heaven, I'm going there, says another song. Their glories will I share. All of its beauty will unfold inside those pearly gates. Jesus and loved ones wait. This is why I want to go. I'll meet my father and my mother, my sister and my brother, reign throughout eternity. But best of all, I'll see my Saviour and praise his blessed favour. This is why I want to go. They want to go to see the glory of God in the temple. And they arrive, and it's a marvellous psalm. These psalms are no exception, centering themselves in Zion, that thrice happy place. They're looking upward as they move forward. And the Lord has promised them through this, the words of this psalm, if you will go back to 
Second Samuel chapter 7 and verses 10 to 17, you'll find there that the Lord converses with Nathan the prophet. And he tells Nathan the prophet concerning the rule of David. That God himself would build... David, you see, wanted to build this house for the Lord. But the Lord said no. And his reason for that was because his son Solomon was going to, to build that house. And that became the temple. And it's a long story which I can't take too much time to tell you this morning. But uh, David th then uh, was very keen for the, And the Lord rejected his offer. And yet he, David ha was able to help by pouring funds and, and energies into building the temple eventually. <clears throat> and it was a glorious temple. If you read of Solomon's temple in those chapters of Sa Second Samuel and on to Kings, it was a magnificent place. It was a place where gold was just glistening all over the place. It was wonderful architecture to it. Wonderful structure to it. Wonderful plants and trees and birds and bees all carved into the, into the acacia wood. And, and, and when, you, when you get there, you say, wow, look at that building. When I was a minister down in Sussex, there was a Mormon tabernacle in East Grinstead not far from where we lived. And they were re-consecrating it because it had to be redecorated. They painted it. And they did a lot of work on it. And they opened it for visitors to come. So Barbara and I decided we'd go along, join the queue, and we, we saw this place. And we thought it was going to be a big meeting hall, but it wasn't. It was lots of little rooms where different things took place. Where people, and there was a big baptistry and it was a massive structure filled with water and carried on the, on the shoulders of cattle. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 we, we were to told to be reverent all the time we were going through this place. And we went up the stairs right to the top. And the guy says, now we're going to heaven. We're going to the special place. <clears throat> and we opened this door and went into this room and it was Dulux. It was like a Dulux color card. It had nothing to do with heaven. In fact, it would almost make you vomit. It was disgustingly awful. And I thought, how different heaven would be. <laughs> and, and, and the church should be a, a taste of it. And it was millions of pounds spent on utter rubbish. Millions of pounds. But we, all, we, we, we don't have to pay a price to enter the presence of God's holy temple here on earth, which is the church. And so the Lord has a meaning for David. He has a temporary building that's going to be built by Solomon, and it will not last for long. It will be one day destroyed, and they'll try to rebuild it. And that generation, says Zechariah, and they saw the temple being restored, and they said, ah, but they, had, they, they knew the earlier temple. They knew the previous temple, and they wept because they couldn't reproduce it. Because you had a building, though consecrated to God, did not have the glory of God manifest in it. And a temple had yet to come in the line of David, David's house. And the house that was built for David was not a material house of bricks and mortar. It was a house of people. You're a living te temple, says Peter to us in his epistle. We're a temple as a habitation for God, says Paul in Ephesians chapter 2. God dwells in his temple, but he dwells in it as himself being the temple. So Jesus could say, take this temple down and I'll rebuild it in three days. And he was speaking of himself. And then the Apostle John later on writes his wonderful gospel. And that wonderful prologue to his gospel, it tells us, and and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. glory glory as of the only begotten of the son of God a unique glory and so you and I this morning we're on our pilgrimage, pilgrimage in earth, we're, we're, we're heading somewhere and are we going to God's temple, are we going to mix with all these other people singing his praises singing his words and being part of that house Jesus himself said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. You see, we're, we're too preoccupied with doing things ourselves. We need to enter into what, G what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. 
It's not what we do, but what, what he has done. It will be a dwelling place for a people that will be like home. Jesus said, I, I, I'm telling you this because I want you to be with myself. I want you to be with me in glory. We want to be part of his company and part of that presence of the wonderful people. So when the psalmist opens up and says, remember David, he's not saying, don't forget David. He's saying, where we're at now, the spirit of David ought to be in our minds. Think of what David was. Think of where David was, what David was doing. Think of the promises that came through his lips. Think of that covenant that God made with him, telling him he would build this temple of people for himself, where he would be worshipped in holiness. Do not turn away from your anointed one, he says. And that's a wonderful concept. Do not turn your face away from me. I heard a preacher one time, some many years ago, preaching on prayer. <clears throat> and he made special mention to, jo to Moses' prayers. And Moses was praying, and the, 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 the Hebrew text could be literally translated, he stroked the face of God. He stroked it. Now, you, you, you know what that's like, don't you? You're, you're sitting in, at home and, and the family around you and, and your, your favourite grandson or granddaughter comes and sits on your knee and everybody's yak, yak, yakking away and they try to say something and people are just yak, yak, yakking away. And what do they do? They put their hand up and they turn your face. They stroke the face. And you know, sometimes what we do is, what is it, dear? And we talk with them and, and it's a lovely relation. But there are other times when they stroke the face and then we, we, we brush their hand away because we're still talking, we're still busy. God doesn't do that. You see, and that's what he's saying here. Don't turn your face away from me. Don't turn my hand from your face. I still want to be with you. If I might say this reverently, I still want to sit on your knee and be loved. I still want to be with you. And you, you know what it's like. That love isn't expressed verbally. The eyes meet and the child sees the love of the parent, the love of the grandparent. And there's a calmness and a peace and a joy just to be there on Pappy's knee, holding on to him and hugging him. And then letting him hear what I have to say. And what I have to say sometimes this is the babbling of an infant. But my Heavenly Father doesn't turn his face away from that. <coughs> And so you get this wonderful thing. And uh, we, we come then to verse, uh, Psalm 133. And once we get there, there's still some singing. They've got, they've got this little hymn. There's a, 132 is a big hymn. It's got lots of verses to it. But this little hymn is a beautiful one. Behold, or come, how, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. <clears throat> now once again, in the contemporary life that we live. We want that to be a prayer for our, our, our assemblies, don't we? But this is not just for, for a local assembly. It, it, the Apostle Paul takes up the idea and, and tells us to, to, to preserve the, the unity of the church in, in the bond of peace, in the spirit of peace. And it's a bit like, like that. And here we have this wonderful... Uh, behold how good and pleasant when brothers dwell in unity that will never be perfected here there will always be somebody who will be different now we're not saying it's a happy thing to see brothers and sisters dwelling in uniformity he doesn't want us all to be robots or automatons he wants us to be real people but when he says Behold how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell in unity. He's looking to the glory. He's looking to the finished temple. When all the living stones have been put into the church building. So that people of God are complete. And then we will be blessed in unity. And that unity will be blessed in the, de in, in the arrival place. Where we get to, when we all get there. Now if this was such a blessed time for those people in Israel who came on their pilgrimages, to, pilgrimages to, to, to the temple. What, what, what wonderful thing it is. 
It's like a precious oil on the head running down. There's a sweetness about it. There's, there's, there's a, a, a loveliness about the presence of it. It's a wonderful dream come true. We go to that blessed place where praise comes. And so the, the, the Lord commands his blessing from there. And that's the giveaway that it's nothing to do with being here. It's the being to do with there. All our blessings come from the throne of grace. Amen. And the throne of grace is found in Zion. And Zion, thrice happy place. That's where my friends and pilgrims dwell. That's where God manifests his glory to us. The place of his love and of his grace and goodness. It becomes a home to us. We're glad to be there. And because of the occasion, they've, they've come in their journey from the, the circumstances of life to the glory of the temple. And just being there blots out all of their thoughts. And they're of one heart and of one mind. And they're like those early Christians in Acts. They were of one heart and of one mind. And nothing they kept was their own. And they shared with each other. And there was that warmth of fellowship. And there was just that joy of being together. That joy of being there to, to, to sense the sweetness of, of, of his presence. Mm. And to enjoy the blessing that God has commanded. If you like to, to put it this way. We enter into God's temple. We, we enter into the, the house that God has made for his dwelling. And when we get there, we get there in blessed unity. And then the Lord God himself says, now bring the blessing here. And it's, it's, it's like calling to feed us, calling out for us to be fed, that we might sit at a table and enjoy each other's presence. And enjoy the presence of the Saviour. What a wonderful place that will be. Amen. And that's where we're heading, dear friends, if we're lovers of the Lord Jesus. And remember, Jesus himself sang these psalms. Because he joined with the people in the pilgrimage. And on what we call the day of Pentecost, he was there riding into the city. Riding on the colt of a donkey. And they were shouting out, Hosanna to the king. And they thought, this is it. We're going to arrive. We're going to get there. And it'll be a blessed time. And there's a, there's a, there's a euphoria in the, uh, amongst the people. They're, they're full of joy. That they've, ma they've made it. They've made it up the hill. Because Jerusalem was on a hill. And they see the beauty of the city, of the, of the city and, and of the temple. And, and they're going to go into it. And they're going to be all together. And they're going to worship God together. And it'll be such a happy place. Mm. And they'll have come from all over the country. And from other countries. They'll be joining together. And so they will be enjoying the sweetness of fellowship. And that's why we have this wonderful uh, psalm in Psalm 134. Come bless the Lord. All you servants of the Lord. Who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. He who made heaven and earth. Now if you want to picture that. Imagine a Jewish family of believers. And they've left somewhere up in the hills of Judea. And they've gone through the rough countryside. They made their way up the pathway to, to, to Zion. And they arrive in the temple. But it's late. They're standing in the temple. In the middle of the night. They're night watch people. Imagine it, if you will, this way. Here's mum and dad and the kids. And all the way they've been singing along these songs. And the dad has been telling his kids what this is all about. And they say, Dad, Dad, my feet are hurting. Just a few more miles, son. It won't take long now. Oh, Dad, when will we get there? Around the next bend. But every time it's around the next bend. And the next bend. And yeah, oh, this is, this, is too, this is too steep a hill. My legs can't take it. Son, it'll be worth it all when we get there, believe me. But you've said that before, Dad, and this is just awful. And so they, 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 they go on. And they're, they're happy one moment, and, and the children sing a few songs. And then they, Dad, we're still not there. 
How much longer? Well, it's getting late now, son. It's, it, it, the evening is falling. We might not get there till the morning. Oh, Dad, you've, you, you've told us so much. We, we want to see it. We want to get there. We want to see what this place is like. And so they arrive, and it's late at night. And they go into the temple. And there's silence. Not a word from the children. And then the silence is broken. Come, bless the Lord, says the father. And the children join in with him. They say, yeah, Dad, it's, it's, it's even better than you told us it was going to be. It's a bit like David's kingdom and Solomon's temple and Solomon's kingdom. And the Queen of Sheba comes and, and she'd heard of this and she, she said, and when she, when she saw it all, she said, that it's too much for me. The half has not been told me. I knew about this place. I knew what would go on here. I knew the kind of person that you was. But I didn't realize it was this good. I didn't realize it was this, this full of happiness and joy and pleasantness uh, for, for the, the, the Lord's people. And so what a day that will be when we get there to see Jesus and to be with him. Now the thing is this, are you still on the journey? Do you know which direction you're heading in? Because we make choices in life. And some of those choices will be, yes, Lord, I'll follow you wherever you lead me. But there's an ultimate choice. Lord, I want to be there where you are. I want to be in heaven where you are, where you're going to be dwelling. And, and, and so you, you've got to choose because there's another direction. And instead of leading to life, it leads to death. Jesus sung this song and he got to Jerusalem and all the worshippers were wanting to go to the temple and he in accordance with the instructions of God through his law went to the temple but what did he see there? He saw corruption he saw swindlers men who were professed teachers of the people not teaching but making money out of these occasions. Everything was corrupt and it angered him. And as he went back home to Bethany to his friend's house for the night, he must have dwelt upon these things for the following day he came and he turned the tables upside down. He cast them out. He'd made a whip to, 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 to drive the animals out. It was a stinking place. The glory was his. But he, he also made a choice. And that choice was made in the triune God. When Father, Son and Holy Spirit conspired together in a covenant that could not be broken. An everlasting covenant. A covenant that said if we enter into it, we will receive eternal life. And the covenant was this, that God the Father would send his Son. And the Spirit of God would come upon the Son to do his work. And he performed his work perfectly. And he is the one who should have had all the glory and all the honour. But he doesn't know, go, go, to, go to the temple. He goes to a wooden cross. He climbs that hill of Calvary. And shed his precious blood. That you and I might enter into his tabernacle. That we might enter into his holy place. That we might his joy. Be the joys of heaven forever you see Jesus made that choice when he said father not my will but your will be done once he had said that he couldn't go back on it and he went through the garden of Gethsemane and he wept father father is there any other way can I can, can, can we not work out another 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 no, son, this is the way. When you started ministering in public, I came from heaven by the form of the Holy Spirit. And we three conspired together. And you said, I, I said of you, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And I can't allow you to disappoint me now. 
and all the way to Calvary he went for me. Amen. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day of rejoicing that will be. There will be no sorrow there. No more burdens to bear. No more sickness. No more pain. No more parting over there. And forever we will be on that happy golden shore. What a day of rejoicing that will be. What a day it will be. When my Saviour Jesus I will see, I will look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day, that'll be. Will I meet you in glory? Oh yes. Grace. Will you be there? Amen. Will you be singing these psalms? Yes. No, we'll be singing the psalms of Moses and of the Lamb. And, and, and the wonderful thing about that is, it's a, it's a trained choir. You see, there, there are two ways you can use the word of. Belonging to and, and being. And, and the song of Moses is his favourite song. It's the song that Moses loves to sing. It's the song unto the Lamb, unto him who has loved us and washed us from blood, from, from sin. Unto him be the glory forever. And, and, and all the crowd join in the singing. And then Jesus himself, the Lamb, is the subject of the song. Mm. So it's the song that Moses loves to sing, and it's the song that has as its subject the Lamb. Mm. And who is the Lamb? He's the one who sits upon the throne. Hallelujah. And all worthiness and praise is to be his. Mm. And when we get to heaven, yes, we'll see our loved ones. They'll all be there. I have a little poem here that, that uh, I, I, I picked up he he it's another old gospel song heaven I'm going there glories untold I'll share all of its beauty will unfold inside those pearly gate Jesus and loved ones wait this is why I want to go I'll meet my father yes I will I'll meet my mother I will I'll meet my sister, who died when she was eight days old, and my brother. But best of all, I'll meet my Saviour and share his blessed favour. This is why I want to go. How about you? Are you going that journey? Oh yes, it's rough now. And we've been there, we've been in the darkness. We've been in the trials, in the tribulations. We've gone up the steep paths. We've gone down to the dark valleys. But God has sustained us every step of the way. Amen. And he's saying to us, keep on. Press on. I've learned recently that the best thing to say to people who ask me how I am, because my health isn't the strongest, and they say, just tell them you're pressing on. And I'm pressing on. Will you press on with me? Amen. Will you say that Jesus, I will follow you? Yes. Will you walk with him? Mm. Because when you walk with him, he's not silent. We talk with him. And he tells us we are his own. Amen. And the joy we share while we tarry there, none other has ever known. Oh, walk with Jesus. Would you know what blessings there are for you? And we could go on and pick out experiences we've had. And things that have happened to us that cause us to look to him. And the blessing. And the blessing is in each of these psalms. It's the triune blessing. It's the blessing unto him who loved us and gave himself for us. It's the hymn that says, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord grant you peace. And so we have this wonderful blessing coming upon us. Go home this morning, blessed of the Lord. Amen. Rejoicing that you belong to Jesus. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Amen. Amen.
I wish we'd had the hymn, When All My Labours and Trials Are O'er, and I'm safe on that beautiful shore, but it's not in our hymn book, and I wouldn't risk trying to sing it all without the book. But yes, that would be glory for me. A fellow Christian rebuked me once because I rejoice in this song. Oh, that will be glory for me, glory. He says, no, it won't. It'll be glory for Jesus. Yes, I said, objectively, it'll be his glory. But subjectively, it'll be mine. And that glory will be your heart. Well, I'll, I'll leave it with you. Glory to God. Let's turn our hymn books to 331. 331. We conclude with the hymn, In Heavenly Love Abiding. 331.